Hey, and welcome to Star Wars 101. Today, I'm going to tell you how Anakin told Palpatine about the slaughter of the Tusken Raiders. Most of my information is coming from the book Brotherhood by Mike Chen. This is a very interesting and informative book, and I recommend any Star Wars fan listen or read it. Before we get started, please tap that like button, tap that subscribe button, and don't miss out on any of our other Star Wars videos. And with all that said, I hope you enjoy. I'm going to start off straight away with an excerpt from the book, A Conversation Between Anakin and Palpatine. Has anything troubled you lately? We haven't even had time to discuss the happenings of Geonosis. Palpatine took a sip and shook his head. How fast life changes these days. Actually, Anakin started. The words formed in him, wanting to push out without any regard for secrecy, to tell someone besides Padme about the horrors of that night on Tatooine. Someone older, wiser, who clearly cared for his well-being. Someone who didn't judge, which was why he couldn't tell any Jedi about it, not even Obi-Wan. Anakin, I may be a busy man, but for the next few minutes, I am here merely as your friend. You can tell me anything. Polite creases formed around his mouth as Palpatine smiled. Please, feel free to confide in me about whatever concerns you. You have permission to be honest, and I will not judge. While I do work with the Jedi, I am not beholden to their rules. Right before Geonosis, Anakin started, before pausing. But it wasn't a hesitation. Instead, it was as if all those feelings and memories competed to get out, causing a log jam in his throat. My mother died. Palpatine's lips parted, his brow tilting in concern. My boy, I am so sorry for your loss. She didn't just die. The words broke through, a storm raging with them. Flashes from that night flickered by, the way the lightsaber pierced the wall, the dance of the flame over his mother's cold, open eyes, the thump from the severed heads of the sand people hitting the ground. She was murdered. And I... Anakin stopped himself, letting it all formulate. Before that night, Anakin thought he knew pain. His first few days in the Jedi Order, the undying ache of missing his mother compounded with the sorrow of losing Qui-Gon Jinn. All of that magnified the way the Jedi seemed to talk and act, with an intentional calm distance. Those dark times were a speck of dust compared with the endless desert of that night, that moment when his mother's body went limp, unable to finish her final word. Rage, despair, disbelief. None of those words aptly described the unseemly primal explosion he felt in that moment. Even now, just thinking about it, allowed such a beast to crack through his defenses until he took a steadying breath and pushed it back so words could form. I killed them, the Sand People. Unlike that moment in the Lars homestead, Anakin wasn't expelling grief through searing words and falling tears. This came out calm, tempered, equal parts admission and confirmation. They took her life, and I took theirs. Palpatine set his calf mug down with a clink, then reached over, the warmth of his palm resting over Anakin's mechanical one. Though the hand was made of wire and alloy, he felt the connection in ways so different from most of the moments in his life. They killed your mother. Your mother, he said, his weathered voice slow and deliberate. Of course you wanted revenge. How could anyone not, when facing such an injustice? It seems like simple mathematics to me. Now, this was not an admission. This was a validation. And he knew, he knew that the Chancellor would give it because he always understood in ways that the Jedi couldn't. As if reading Anakin's mind, Palpatine sat up and quickly asked the perfect question. How many Jedi actually care about other people? Anakin started with his reflexive response. Attachment is forbid. I know the dogma, but be honest. Let's take, say, behind the Chancellor, a Republic cruiser emerged from below the window line hovering upward until its ion drives came alive in a burst, powering the ship into the sky. Master Windu, 
He is, perhaps, the Order's greatest warrior, most powerful force adept. But do you really think he cares about people? Like a button pushed in his mind, Anakin saw Mace's glare, heard his condescending monotone speech, felt the air of judgment that naturally came with him. He knew the Jedi Master would do anything to complete the mission, to dedicate himself to seeing justice in the Republic. But did he care about anyone? Not, Anakin said slowly, in the same way you or I do. You see? Master Windu can go on for hours about Shatterpoints, but perhaps that lack of empathy is his very own Shatterpoint. Palpatine gave a wary grin, his eyes offering an empathy that Anakin so rarely felt in his life. You care, Anakin. You have an immense heart. Don't let the Jedi take it from you. Your heart makes you a better person. It makes you a stronger person. Though the words didn't directly reflect the tale of the Sun Dragon, it touched on it just enough that Anakin pictured his mother sitting on the edge of his bed. Had he been alone, not with the Chancellor, not with Padme, not with Obi-Wan, he may have cracked, but he wouldn't let himself right now. And instead, he pushed all those feelings inside. And that's where the conversation about it ends. So that is how Palpatine found out about Anakin slaughtering the Tusken Raiders. I enjoyed listening to this book a lot and gaining more of an understanding of the characters and story we all love. It always kills me when I see how easily Palpatine could manipulate Anakin, but then I also think about how part of his descent was because of how he felt he couldn't trust the Jedi Order, and all the secrets he kept because of that. I hope you enjoyed this video, and like I said before, please make sure to tap that like button and that subscribe button. Also, please leave a comment down below telling us what you think of this excerpt and if you liked how they explained it. Once again, most of my information was taken from the book Brotherhood by Mike Chen. Until next time, have a great rest of your day and may the force be with you, always.